Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be doing an introductory tutorial to Google Groups. Now Google Groups isn't something I think about using regularly but in reality I probably use it every day when I'm working and there's different ways you can use Google Groups so let's look at a couple. So the first is for online forums. So these are places where you can come and discuss uh, issues, topics, uh, interests, whatever it might be and you can discuss that in an online forum using Google Groups. The other way that we more regularly use these is through distribution lists. And if you're part of an organization using Google, you're probably part of a Google Group distribution list, even when you don't realize it. Later on, when we log on to Google Groups, you might be able to see those distribution groups that you're already a part of. So a lot of the work that we do when using Google Groups isn't done by us, but is normally done by our, our domain admins and people like that, our IT services. So one thing you will need to do is to check your domain settings. So where I work, I can't create groups myself. Um, only specific people can do that. So today I'm going to be using a different account to create the group that I'm going to demonstrate this tutorial on. So I'm in Google Groups now. You can go to Google Groups by typing in groups.google.com or you can click on the waffle icon and find groups there as well. So there's a couple of different ways you can go to groups. So groups recently went through a bit of a makeover, so it is looking a bit more 2020 now uh, rather than the dated look it previously had. But ultimately its functions have not changed and so we can go into Google Groups and you can see straight away in the top left hand corner a big button that says create groups. So if I click on this button then I get this pop up window. So in here I need to choose my group name. So this can be anything you want. So imagine I was going to do mine on Google Training. And then as I do this, as you can see, it begins to auto populate the group email. If you are in a domain, um, it doesn't have to be at googlegroups.com. You can choose the domain that you're part of as part of that. When you're done, you can also then put in a group description. And once I'm done with that, I can click next. When you are doing the group email address, there are certain names that will already be taken. And so we'll have to see if this will allow us to do this or we'll have to choose a different name. So this one is already taken. Um, so I'm going to add something on just to try and make it a bit more unique. And so our next page determines the privacy settings of our group. So first of all, we're thinking who can find the group? So do we want this to be a public group? Do we want it to be a private group? And so can it be group members only or anyone on the web? And then also who can join it? Is it only invited members or can anyone ask or can anyone just join without me actually admitting them into the group? So we need to choose these settings. And then we can choose who can view conversations, who can post and who can view members. So again, the similar settings, whether it's anyone on the web, whether it's just group managers. So we can change these settings here. Obviously, any settings you do make, you can go back into and change later on if you wish. If we click next, then we can think about who we want in our group. So we can begin to add members. So I'm going to add my student account. So you can begin to populate this film of group members plus any other group managers you want. If I want to then add a welcome message so that when they are added to the group, they will receive this message as well. The next thing I can do is choose for the group members what type of subscription they have. If I click on the drop down here, you can see we've got all mail, digest, abridged and none. So all mail means that when anyone posts into the group, you receive that as an email. So the digest email means that you receive one email a day, but it has the content of all the emails in that one email. And the abridged gives you one email a day with just a short introduction of each of those emails, which you can then click on and choose if you want to read. So the settings here really depend on how many emails you think might be in this group. So all mail is fine if there's very few emails, just one or two maybe a day that you might be getting. And obviously users can go and change this themselves. I was part of a group and on the first day I was part of it, there were around 200 emails, which completely clocked clogged my inbox and so I've changed mine to the abridged setting. You also have the last option here on this page to directly add members. So um, this is a question of whether you want to invite them to the group and they then have the choice or whether you want to directly add members. So obviously you have to choose whether you have the right to directly add them uh, and have their permission to do so. 
So once we're happy with this, we can click Create Group. So check I'm not a robot, and then Create Group. So it's given me the summary of my group, so I'm going to just click Go to Groups. On the left-hand side over here, we can see how we can manage our group. The first part is with conversations, whether they're approved or pending. So this depends on how the settings are, whether people can just post, or whether the manager of the group needs to approve posts before they become public. And under that, we have our people. So this is where we can manage people, where we can check on our members, existing members, or we can look at people who have requested to join the group, or we can look at band members of the group. If I want to post into the group, I can click on this icon here that says New Conversation. And I click on here, and it's very much like an email format. So I can put my subject in. And again, very similar tools to Gmail, with formatting, with attachments, and with images. And then once I'm done, I can click Post Message. And so depending upon the settings, then the person will either receive an email or an abridged email or something like that later on. So I've just headed over to Gmail, and this is the example of the email and how I received it. Now, if I'm in Gmail, I can also send to the group from Gmail. So I've got my email open here. I'm ready to compose, and I can just put in the group name. And then I can add some information and then just send this as a normal email and it will go to groups. So that's probably how you're used to using it in terms of distribution groups, but it can also be used that way for a web forum. If you do want to review your groups in Google Groups, you can click on My Groups, and here you see a list of your different groups. If you want to, you can also search for groups. So at the moment, this would just search within My Groups, but if I wanted to search all groups, I could search for other groups that I might be interested in as well. And then I could request to join those groups if I wanted to. So in the My Groups view as well, if you want to go into the group, you can just click on here, or you can change your subscription settings here, go into the group settings, or add members here as a manager of the group. If you want to make it a favorite group, you can click on your star to make it a favorite group. And then this appears in your favorite groups category here on the left-hand side. So I hope this has given you enough introduction to get you started in Google Groups to know how to create groups, to add members, and how to post the groups as well. And if you can't create your own groups at the moment because of your domain settings, then do speak to your admin staff or to your IT and talk to them about the type of group that you might want to set up and use.